This show furnished by Rowan, Gervy, and Wynn. It's time for Gervy's Law, the intersection of law and life, with your host, injury compensation attorney, author, and mentor, Alan Gervy. Alan is managing attorney at the law firm of Rowan, Gervy, and Wynn, a workers' compensation law firm who have represented injured workers for over 35 years. Joined today by his co-host, radio personality and television host, Carrie Kaysen. Carrie brings a fresh, real perspective to the intersection of law and life, turning Murphy's Law upside down. And now, here are Alan Gervy and Carrie Kaysen. Good afternoon, Los Angeles. And everyone listening around the world, I love Los Angeles, and think I, I think I'm going to do a blog on Los Angeles. Going to call, I'm going to call it, that's Los Angeles. There's nothing Jewish in it, though. Nothing Yiddish. Nothing that would say you're a Canadian Jew lawyer. What are you talking about, Canadian Jews? <laughs> Is that like a theme today? That's what you talk about every, pretty much every show. I do not. Canada being Jewish. You didn't even catch that blog. That's Los Angeles. <clears throat> Right. Photos of wonderful landscapes in Los Angeles. How do you think that would go over? Well, and th- people do it every day. Oh, Carrie. What, what's Carrie, happening here? You need to listen to the show. I'm Alan Gervy, and I'm the managing partner of the law firm of Rowan Gervy and Wynn. And today, as usual, I am right here in beautiful Culver City, California, to be the managing partner of your life. And why are you smiling at me, Because you cracked me up. What do you mean I crack you, you up? Crack Your me lips up. look great. Thank you. You know, I did them because Genevieve's taking pictures today because of our guests. Our guests Special are really good-looking guys. Yeah. I mean, really. We're not just talking about some middle-aged dudes here. We are talking about some sex symbols. Yeah, well, first of all, you know, the, one of the guests we've had before, and I cannot believe his age he looks about 10 to 15 years younger than he is so when he told me his i couldn't believe it you know i showed uh my wife keith fink and she said man he looks so much younger than you do (laughs) no she didn't you're so full of it (gasps) she would never say that she did i swear to god she really likes him anyway welcome to the show carrie thanks it's so exciting you mentioned keith fink we had him on the show it was just last week. Yeah. What a great guest. And, of course, we talked about his plight after being terminated as an adjunct professor at UCLA for opening his mouth, basically. Free speech class, and they terminated him for practicing free speech. And for not being a liberal. Let's just call a spade a spade. You know, it's it really is. It's like it's too bad. You can't have different points of views and you can't criticize things and get people thinking. And you know what Keith said to us after the show? He said, if you think that I practice the First Amendment, freedom of expression, you should talk to my client. Yeah. Dove Charney. And my friend. <laughs> and his, <laughs> his friend. friend yes. Thank you. And we said, Dove Charney, the Dove Charney. The guy who fashions himself as one of the most forward-thinking industrialists and entrepreneurs in his generation. That's the man. American Apparel. You've worn American Apparel, haven't you? Yeah, I still have my bathing suits from American Apparel. I'm wearing some underwear right now. You're... I want to see it. Uh, I want to see it. Stand up, Alex. Wait a second. You're so full of it. Stand up right now. Who would wear their underwear (laughs) at work? Who would do that? (laughs) I want to see your underwear. We'll show you another time. I'm not doing that here You're on the sweating. air. I mean, oh, look at Keith Alan, Fink as Dove, an attorney. Dove, Dove, Dove is many things, as you know. Yes, he's also he a photographer. He's an awesome photographer, and uh, you were. Uh, but he's also he also was the fit model. This is the truth. The fit so, model. Well, you're, yes, there was a reason for him wearing his underpants, where there wouldn't be a reason for you wearing your underpants in front of Miss Kasem. That is part of creativity. I run a law firm. I cannot run around in my underwear because we're not very creative. We're just representing a bunch of injured workers, a lot of them who have been suffering for many, many years because of work injuries. But I couldn't wear my underwear at work. No, okay. You couldn't, sued. but Mr. Charney could because he's yeah. a fit model at an apparel company. And he's That's very fit. Well, he, yes. and we're gonna He is. I think he's a size 26. Is that right, though? 
32. Oh, 32. What? 26. What the heck? Just I'm on size. This is years ago. I don't know. Huh? 26. You were a small. Yeah. Things change. Wait okay. a second. You, call, you said he's a small? Well, this is, uh, I, I must have asked him in a deposition, maybe 2007. So speaking uh-huh. of that, we're getting, <laughs> Gov, we want to get right into it. We want to welcome you to Gervis Law. Thanks for coming down to talk to us. Thank you for having Keith and I. It's it's a pleasure to have you. You have been so well chronicled. And by the way, when I talked about that, that's Los Angeles. He has amazing photography on his blog called That's Los Angeles. Carrie's fixing his mic. Keep your hands off him, please. More importantly, is my Instagram. I think it's Dove Charney underscore Los Angeles. That's what I'm focusing on right now. I have a similar Facebook under Dove yes. Charney. I've wa- I've looked- all three of them are good. I've looked at your Facebook. It's great. Thank you. you. How do you have the time? You're working 20-hour days. How do you have the energy and the time? You Right now, you look so calm. How do you do it? Well, first of all, I just shoot photos. I've been shooting photos for probably 40 years. I like signage, street signage particularly. And when I see an interesting sign, I just roll down my window and shoot. So back in the Cote St. Luke or Westmount days or wherever you were in Montreal, you were, as an eight-year-old, not only selling schmatas, but you were also taking pictures? Well, I began selling T-shirts in front of the Montreal Forum when I was in, mid- in my mid-teens, when I was 15, 16 years old, number one. Number two, I've been shooting since I was possibly six or seven years old. I had a learning disability. I was severely dyslexic, but I enjoyed using the camera because I could process images. And I had a small Instamatic 110 or 126. I began to develop my own film. And I've always appreciated signage because signage was a very big issue. In Montreal, we had a lot of bilingual signs, and signs were very much part of the culture as as they are here in Los Angeles. Is that something that your parents kind of gave you? I know you talk a lot in... And by the way, folks, there's been so many articles written about Dove, about his rise and fall... Uh, with American Apparel, but you also talk about your grandparents as they had a role in the schmata business, we'll call it, the the clothing business, and how uh, the role that your mother and your father have played in making you what you are today. Well, my bubby, which means grandmother in Yiddish, was a sample maker in Montreal. There was an apparel industry, large apparel industry in Montreal, there still is. She used to make $7 a week as a sample maker in, 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 the, in 1929. Um... I come from a family of artists. My my grandfather, my my Bobby's husband, was a painter. Z- let's call him Zeta. In Canada, we say Zeta, and the states to say yeah. Zadie. I don't know why that is, but it's just the way it is. Well, I'm going to throw this at you. I actually say Baba uh, in Canada because I'm from Winnipeg. Right, Zeta and Baba versus Zadie and Booby. Yeah, it just it's regional, I guess. How things transformed and got adopted into the English language, but in Montreal we say Zeta and Bubby. Um, my Bubby was a sewer and my Zeta was a, was a painter and a decorator. On my mother's side, um, my entire family, basically my father and his two brothers are artists. My, Israel Charney is a graphic designer. M- my father's an architect. Melvin Charney was an architect. Moshe Safdi, my mother's, my mother's brother, is an an arch- famous architect. He was the architect for the square ball. Oh, wow. uh, and, you know, countless other major projects all over the world. One of the most important architects of our age. Uh, so you come by this naturally. This isn't, uh, you know, when you talk about taking pictures and having that eye and starting out as an eight-year-old, this is all part of the family. It's part of the family, but it's also part of the culture from which I come, which is the city of Montreal. is a very creative city, and it's very much linked to the spirit of Los Angeles because we have a Latin culture, in this case fr- French culture, combined with an Anglophone culture, and it's kind of how those two cultures intersect. And we have a similar manifestation here in Los Angeles, so I really have grown to appreciate. I love Montreal, and I also love Los Angeles. At this point, my art's here. Now, you've adopted Los Angeles as your own. You have adopted Latinos, Asians as your own. You were the original who said, let's make clothing here in America, here in Los Angeles. Let's pay our workers, our laborers, at m- above minimum wage. 
Let's not make this a sweatshop. What kind of business model is that when everyone else and their dogs are going across uh, to China and to Hong Kong and are using slave labor when you are focusing on the good folks here in Los Angeles? Um, I think it's a very intelligent business approach. I believe it is the path of least resistance. What we were doing is we were leveraging art, design, and technology to advance our business process. By integrating the worker into our factory, we were able to advance our quality in a way that we could never do if we were offshore or if we had outsourced the manufacturing even here, even if we outsourced it domestically in Los Angeles or in other regions of the United States. I believe in embracing the worker, embracing what they do, learning about what they do, and cultivating products that people love to wear and pursuing value by other means other than a relentless pursuit of low-cost cheap weight labor and, and that's all wonderful but the fact of the matter is you have to make a profit everyone else is okay. making a profit well let's look at the numbers at american apparel which I, this was a company that i lost control of by way of a securities crime okay maybe keith wouldn't call it that but i do and i will um uh, I lost control of the company by way of a proxy fraud, and that's still that 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 uh, issue will be litigated for years to come. Now we generated five billion dollars of sales through the point of my ousting over a ten-year period. We generated three billion dollars of gross profits, approximately three billion. Okay, and we generated about a quarter billion dollars of earnings before interest, taxes, and depreciation. So I think we proved, my team and myself and the 10,000 employees that I had, we proved that you can make clothing, you can sell clothing worldwide, and you can gen and you can do it profitably. So we already proved that. Unfortunately, we lost the control by some act of God, let's say. Well, I'm not sure if it was an act of God, but we really need to address that. And we'll bring Keith Fink into the conversation after the break okay. because we want to talk about how you lost control, why you lost control. Yeah. And then, of course, folks, you have to hear this story. Keith Fink sued American Apparel uh, for sexual harassment with his client, Mary Nelson. And after these depositions... I cannot believe, Dove, that you hired Mr. Fink to be your attorney after he just wailed on you in deposition. We're going to talk about that after the break. You're listening to Gervie's Law. We're talking to Dove Charney, Keith Fink. I'm here with Carrie Kasem. This is Talk Radio 790 KABC. Have you or someone you know been injured on the job? Rowan, Gervy and Wynn lawyers understand that physical and emotional workplace injuries severely impact your life. You have rights when injured at work, but you need an advocate to avoid getting lost in the red tape of a broken system. Rowan, Gervy and Wynn lawyers fully understand the complex workers' compensation system and will protect your rights if you've been injured on the job. RGW lawyers won't give up when the insurance company fails you, and they have years of experience with catastrophic injuries like brain injuries, strokes, chemical exposure, cancers, and death. RGW lawyers are compassionate and aggressive with over 40 years of advocacy for the rights of injured workers and have helped people change their lives with some of the largest settlements in California. You need someone in your corner if you're suffering from a work-related injury. Rowan, Gervy, and Wynn lawyers will fight to get you the medical treatment you need. A workplace injury can happen at any time. Put this number in your phone now. 855-4-RGW-LAW. 855-4-RGW-LAW or go to rgwlawfirm.com. Attention investors, protect your IRA or 401k by storing your retirement at home with an Augusta Home Delivery Gold IRA. Call Augusta today at 888-852-4788 for a free guide on transferring a portion of your IRA or 401k into approved physical gold and silver coins and store them in your safe at home or at your local bank. Call 888-852-4788 today and discover how you can get up to $2,000 in silver free. Call 888-852-4788. That's 888-852-4788. A Wendy's Frosty is something special. And for a limited time, a Frosty is just 50 cents. An American classic for a classic price. It's not quite a milkshake, not quite an ice cream cone. It's definitely chocolate or vanilla. That choice is on you. Use a spoon or a french fry. Anything goes. A Frosty makes summer special. Yep, there's nothing quite like a Frosty. And there's nothing quite like this deal. A Frosty for 50 cents. It's yours before this deal melts away. Small Frosty only at participating Wendy's for a limited time. Offer not valid in Alaska and Hawaii. 790 KABC. Welcome back to Gervy's Law, turning Murphy's Law upside down on Talk Radio 790 KABC. Yes! 
We are back. Don't laugh, Carrie <laughs> Kasem. Help it. I can't help it. What is this? Music. Huh. Devo. Devo. Yeah, Devo. That reminds me of the 70s and the 80s, Devo. That's when Dove Charney was becoming a real macher in the schmata business. And we, <laughs> crazy. <laughs> hey, I got a smile at him, and even out of Keith Fink. <laughs> Recently, on July 12, 2017, an article came out and said American Apparel founder Dove Charney gives odd answer to questions about having sex with employees. And it goes on to say American Apparel founder Dove Charney, who left after a string of sexual harassment allegations from his own employees, had a strange response when asked if he was having sex with workers at his new company, Los Angeles Apparel. And we're going to talk a lot about Los Angeles Apparel. But before we do, and I'm looking at Keith Fink, who was an attorney who actually represented Mary Nelson, one of the accusers against American Apparel and Dove Charney. And Keith Fink is now the counsel for Dove Charney. Keith, how does it happen? Because i got to tell you something. As an attorney, when I grill a opposition witness, none of them want to talk to me, and I don't want to look at them. I just want to get the heck out and say, stick it up your... By somebody that you, as you say, well, you wailed on. Uh, but I have been a lawyer a long time. And in cases like Mr. Charney's, where sitting across from you is a sophisticated business person, if they're able to see, wow, this guy's a smart guy, perhaps much smarter than my lawyer, and if I'm in a pickle again, I would like him in my camp. If you get a call like that, there's no, there's no reason for you not to take that person uh, as a client. Now, Dove's situation is a little different. I didn't sue the company just on the one case that you're mentioning. I sued the company many, many times. Uh, <laughs> the one you happened to mention, and I actually <laughs> sued the company another two dozen times. Uh, you think that the Charney regime was bad? Oh, the, the regime that came in after him, they were the worst. I have two dozen cases, and those are all great cases, but we don't have time to talk about that today. But, but Dove, I knew from all the times I deposed Dove, a brilliant, brilliant person. Uh, I could see that he did care about his workers, and the press just picked up on the sexual harassment piece. The reality of all the cases I had, none of them had a harassment piece save the one that you mentioned. And even in that case, he didn't sleep with her. He didn't touch her. Right. That was, that was a case where somebody was misclassified as an independent contractor who should have been classified as an employee and then got terminated. And, uh, yes, there was a, a hostile environment claim because, uh, you know, when you're a lawyer, you plead as many viable claims as you can. And when the when the press, and you yourself, I guess, you're you're in the press, if you're covering the case, you're not going to cover the garden variety claims. The salacious stuff is what sells. Well, when we saw you on Dateline, you know, you talked about what he said about sluts when he said it was an endearing term. And, you know, it reminds me of... Growing up in Canada, everyone said, you know, everyone in Canada is either a hockey player or a slut, a prostitute. So, Dove, you know, we have to answer. Our mothers played for the Montreal Canadiens. <laughs> well, I, well, I, well, I, I, you know, Dove and I don't agree on everything, and uh, you know, I believe strongly in the cases that I filed against the company, and to this day, I, I, uh, I, I still believe that those words in the workplace, if said then and said now, uh, they're inappropriate. Uh, there's no place in the workplace to use uh, the word slut, um, uh, perhaps unless you're the show friends and there's a creative environment, uh, then uh, there might be a logical necessity to use those words. Um, or, of course, if you're teaching a class on First Amendment well, that's, freedom of expression. That's correct, in that context, yes. But, Dove, uh, so well, go ahead. Dove, I, I would answer here. that. Lyle, he referred to Lyle Lamani case, which was an important um, freedom of expression case within the context of the workplace. Um, I think that depending on the context... If you're in a writer's room at Friends and you make a sexual joke, it's a sexual comedy, it's appropriate. At American Apparel, at Los Angeles Apparel, we're going to be producing ad campaigns that kind of tease the public, sometimes in a provocative fashion, sometimes with sexuality, sometimes with humor. 
that we advertise in magazines or we did advertise in magazines like Vice. We probably will advertise on, 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 on websites like Vice, et cetera, or adult websites that are, you know, with, with, that are humor oriented or fashion oriented. And there can be an element of sexuality. So if you make a sexual joke or you say that, that particular model, you know, looks like, uh, the S word in the context of, of discussing that particular advertisement, it's probably, it's probably permissible. Was your ouster based on sexual harassment? Or I know they called it misconduct, but do you feel like, uh, they said it's gone too far? And I understand what you're saying because, you know, you are in a creative business, freedom of expression. But the fact of the matter is sometimes they said it went too far. Um, I don't think it had, well, their allegations speak for themselves. There was a termination notice and there's no reference to sexual harassment in the well, way that you're describing Actually, it. Alan, you're wrong. They never said that yeah. anything Mr. Charney did was wrong. He was never written up a single time by American Appeal for anything they did. And in fact, in 2012, the board gave Dove a new employment contract. They wouldn't have given him a new employment contract in 2012 if anything prior to 2012 had caused a whisper Did of a problem. Did they not say and in, misconduct? No, there wasn't any misconduct. I'm not saying that there was misconduct, but they have to say... You to look to their allegations. Correct. And they, they didn't. They did not say no. the word misconduct. So what was the termination based on? Their American Apparel's position. Their, their allegations were that I failed to prevent an impersonation blog, Okay, which is kind of a real reach. This, there was there was a number of allegations, but none of them were related to what we what the what the average person on the street would consider sexual harassment. But what they did was is they spun various things subliminally through the media that would confuse. They used social justice and the issue of sexual harassment, which is a very important one. And I want you to know that I have zero tolerance for sexual harassment within the workplace, and I support laws that protect individuals that are that 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 are victims of or potential victims of discrimination it also couldn't have been sexual misconduct because all of these incidents happened years ago he was terminated in june of 2014 his employment contract had a 30-day cure period so if there ever if there was any issue with any sexual incidents they would have had to have let him known and give him an ability to cure for 30 days. So for an example, if a sexual incident had occurred, let's say, in 2014, you would have gone to him and said, here's an incident. You have 30 days now to cure. Maybe go take a sexual harassment training uh, uh, class. So there wasn't any legitimate reason. You know, that's why we have a pro the proxy fraud case. They wanted, to, they wanted to steal control of the company from Charney. And I'll add, they said there was financial misconduct. Right. They did. That that was one of their allegations. Well, so anyway, what, I they, know wait, what wait, actually they, they, happened they, they, because I know we, we keep going around and around and where the allegations here. You now you know most of the board, didn't you? Hire them? Weren't people working for you that were on the board? I mean, people that worked for you for years since they were young. There were no employees. There were, no management was on the board. Number one, that's okay. not accurate. All right. Okay. So it's just people. How did you all, form all your the board? all the all the board members were independent. It's a public company. Okay. Yeah. So, but they weren't related parties, or they weren't okay. they weren't insiders. What happened? Why did they do this to you? Um, I mean, there's, this involves a lot of litigation. But what my, what I'm going to tell you is, I was investigating the chief financial officer for his failure to carry out his duties in connection to financial controls. And as an act of self-preservation, he induced the board on this wild goose chase, whereby they were going to attempt to exculpate me from the company. They did so illegally by way of a false proxy, which I could explain what that is in a moment, in order that they could sell the company from underneath me. And well, that's I, a fake vote. Like they had a, a fake vote, and they, they kind of the, voted. If yeah. you're in Delaware, if you're a Delaware attorney, say the vote was coerced because the information pack. When you have a public company. Many of us have owned shares before in public companies. You get an information packet, yeah. about a 100-page document, and it has all the positions of the company, its financial positions, what the risk factors are, etc. This packet said that I was it was appropriate that both I be the CEO and the chairman of the board, and that without me, the company could collapse, okay? And that I was invaluable to the company. And if key I, man. Yeah. I was the key man. Without me, the company was what could would, would, would and, potentially and, and collapse. And that actually occurred. That actually happened. That was the risk factor they said. So I had. Does that help you in the lawsuit as a key man? And now, well, what, okay, the, I had the four, company was sold early in the year for what eighty million dollars to a Canadian. It wasn't sold. The brand was sold. They sold the company for parts after they destroyed it. They just sold the name to that company, intellectual property. But what I would say is, this proxy said I was key. So 
I had 27% of the shares. Now it's not which at one time was worth over five hundred million dollars. Was that when you had forty? There was a time maybe that my shares were on paper worth a, a large sum of money, possibly over half a billion dollars. Half, now, half a billion dollars. Yeah, and I think my shares were, were probably going to be worth and, more than that at one point. And you didn't cash. Day. You didn't cash out. No, I never sold any shares. Only purchased shares. Now, never, do you have any regrets about that? I mean, look, you don't have the money now. What I had. Uh, let's say that for another show. Now, um, now, uh, what I will say is, I my voting block and. I plan to prove something along these lines. That 27% basically gave me managing control of who was going to be on that board. On the day of the election, I was 47 million of 60, 67 million voting shares. So 47 of 67, you do the math. Majority. And by the way, 67 million p shares voted for these three board members. A staggered board. Every year, you'd vote in three. There were nine members on the board. So these three board members, which I reelected, collaborated with two other board members on the board on a board of nine seats. So they had five seats. And I had just elected three of them, let's say at 11 a.m. They solicited votes through 11 p.m. the night before. And at noon, on June 18th, they told me I either have to give them a support agreement where they took control of the voting rights of my shares, they would give me a four or five million dollar severance, okay, and that I could stay on for approximately a salary of a million dollars a year, five hundred dollars an hour as a consultant, and I, they had, they basically deployed f fraud, deceit. They deceived all shareholders. It was a miscarriage of okay. of shareholder democracy, and it's a, it was a sham. And hey, and and. Hey. But if it was legitimate, why did they keep him on after he was fired? So after June eighteenth, he was. But didn't fired. didn't you try to take over with? Standard general, sta standard general. I uh, made that deal with yes. the hedge fund. And then you end up suing them. I was on the streets, and I was in a situation. Standard General, which is a hedge fund, a new pred predatory hedge fund. I was naive. Came to me and said, "Look, we'll work with you, and we'll take back. We'll do a hostile takeover of your company, and we'll put you back in right, right. away." We were actually successful. We put the company in checkmate. We went on the market. I provided them with downside protection. I basically borrowed money on the shares that I had, okay, to accumulate a larger position. And on a Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, we went from controlling as a group 27% of the company to controlling something along the lines of 47%. But the shares that wow. you were offering, it didn't have, the company didn't have that value. At that time, did no, it? no. We were bar we were borrowing money on my shares, and then we went out in the market to increase and, and we the bought value. Blo we bought right. blocks, yeah. and it was okay. about twenty million dollars. It was about twenty million dollars. We then took once we regained control of the company through a series of agreements that I entered into, which I shouldn't have. They tricked me or tricked my lawyers, and that's right. another matter being litigated. Okay. And your lawyer, meaning Patty Glazer's firm, Glazer Well, who, who was on our show three weeks ago. Yeah, I'm in litigation with her also. She didn't, mention, she didn't mention I, that. All right. She talked about a lot of the work she's doing for Hebrew University in Israel and a lot of the other litigation, but she didn't talk about your case. Okay, so then what happened here was we got together with, 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 with Standard General. They had me, they somehow got the upper hand, got control of the board, got control of my stock, never let me back in, failed to, uh, and, they basically hijacked the company, collaborated with those that had ousted me in the first place, and just would not let me back in the door. And from that time on, they took the company, which was generating, in the year I was, I want you to know, 2014. 13, we had a record year in sales. 14, we generated $40 million of earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation. Even though I was ousted in June, our guidance was 40 to $45 million. So we hit our guidance even when I was out, I was left out on the football field. About a year later, let's say I got there was this investigation, which was a complete sham, which is controlled by Standard. Generally, uses leverage to kind of say, "Hey, come back in, as you can run the company, but behind the scenes." But yeah, they just didn't feel like they were going to let me have control. Then I lost. I got removed again, fired a second time in December of 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 2014. By September of 2015, the company was in Chapter 11. And Standard General combined with other hedge funds such as Goldman Sachs and others, they took control of the company, wiped out all shareholders to a zero, killed the vendors in a bankruptcy. You know, one thing led to another. Keith, what's going to happen in this? 
You know, they have no money. They went belly up. Why are you continuing to pursue it? I'll tell you what's going to happen. If you, I read Elon Musk's book. He got ousted off of two boards, companies he created. Look at him now. Once you do it, you do it in the first place. Look at what he created, American Apparel. Gets ousted, he's going to do Los Angeles Apparel. It's That's probably not going the to be bigger. No, but I'm just saying. That would be my answer, too. No, Thank it is you, not. Very, you know what? I don't, he always yes, says this not to me. I give answer. a good answer, answer, and he puts me down. Look at my litigation. The litigation is a litigation. No. You can, you know what? We can, my personally, no, I, can, wait a second, uh, Carrie. I, I, I understand we're going to talk about Los Angeles Apparel in a few minutes. Alan, right. But we're talking about the answers. You can think that they're non-responsive okay but these are Objection. our carrier, these are our answers so i have the same answer as she does you know i can take personally i could take it or leave with the litigation i'm a lawyer uh mr charney wants to move forward with litigation i believe the claims are righteous i pursue them but okay. as as a person and as dove's friend and as someone tied to the los angeles community i am very excited uh with dove's new company and he is busting his butt with mm-hmm. for los angeles apparel not for him and we haven't even talked about how much money he gave up he's not about money he's a principal person Obviously. Obviously, He's obviously. a principled person that's dedicated uh, not just to Americans, but to uh, to the people in Los Angeles. He's going to create another company just like American Apparel uh, that's going to employ uh, so many great people from, from our city. Uh, and he'll be successful again. Uh, his company will be successful, and, 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 and many people will benefit. But so, isn't there a lot of money being expended now in lawsuits? I mean, uh, so you've got the malpractice suit against your former attorneys. You have the suit against uh, Standard General. You have the uh, suit against uh, American Apparel, whatever's left of it. For well, the lo- don't forget, there's DNO insurance. The board members acted illegally. They committed. I'm alleging they committed proxy fraud, and but there's okay, insurance. But the short answer is you're right. A lot of money is being spent, but you're a lawyer. Uh, so what are you asking us? There was wrongs committed here, okay? I, uh, and and Dove, okay, the Dove was uh, on, on the end of a number of these wrongs. What's he supposed to do? Let him go? I agree. Right. Hey, okay. listen. So however, I, but, however, but, 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 Alan, I, think, I can't read the crystal ball. How is it going to come out? I don't but, know. But, uh, all you can do as a lawyer is the best you can do. Listen. Assuming we lose all the litigation, which is Murphy's Law. You talked about Murphy's Law. You can never hope, you know, the worst things have happened, okay, in the world. We're creating a new company. That's Keith's point, and it was refreshing to hear because it reminded me, too, because I might have answered the the, the question differently because I'm sometimes... Litigants become very. You're li- you're living it, right? You live it, but you shouldn't. That's what I tell your listeners, and that's what Keith is saying. Because in the end, you got to pick up, pull up your socks, put on your shoes, and roll. And, and what are you going to do now with this next company? So this doesn't happen to you again. Save save that I for have the answer after, after the break. After the break, we are going to talk uh, to Dove Charney and to Keith Fink about Los Angeles Apparel. If you haven't heard of Los Angeles Apparel yet. You need to listen to the next segment because you're going to hear what Dove has done. He is the phoenix rising again. You're listening to Gervie's Law right here on Talk Radio 790 KABC. Talk Radio 790 KABC News Update. I'm Steve Cumming. An excessive heat warning goes into effect tomorrow morning and will stay in place until Wednesday night, so says the National Weather Service. The hottest weather will come Monday with triple-digit temperatures expected in several areas. Harvey is weakened from a Category 4 hurricane to a tropical storm, but areas of the Lone Star State of Texas are still getting pounded with wind and rain. Meteorologist Chad Myers has the rainfall totals. Over a foot of rain in some spots already, and it's just starting 72 more hours. I mean, this thing didn't even make landfall until like 10 o'clock last night. We already have 14 inches of rain since 10 o'clock. That's a pretty impressive number, considering it's going to continue to rain. Okay, ABC SoCal weather. Sunny for the rest of the afternoon, with highs from the mid to upper 70s at the beaches to the mid-80s to around 90 inland. Then clear tonight with lows in the mid to upper 60s. More news coming up and continuous coverage on KABC.com. I'm Steve Cumming. Talk Radio 790, KABC News. Have you or someone you know been injured on the job? Rowan Gervy and lawyers understand that physical and emotional workplace injuries severely impact your life. You have rights when injured at work, but you need an advocate to avoid getting lost in the red tape of a broken system. Rowan Gervy and Wynn lawyers fully understand the complex workers' compensation system and will protect your rights if you've been injured on the job. RGW lawyers won't give up when the insurance company fails you, and they have years of experience with catastrophic injuries like brain injuries, strokes, chemical exposure, 
exposure, cancers, and death. RGW lawyers are compassionate and aggressive with over 40 years of advocacy for the rights of injured workers and have helped people change their lives with some of the largest settlements in California. You need someone in your corner if you're suffering from a work-related injury. Rowan Gervy and Wynn Lawyers will fight to get you the medical treatment you need. A workplace injury can happen at any time. Put this number in your phone now. 855-4-RGW-LAW. 855-4-RGW-LAW or go to rgwlawfirm.com. I was in line at the grocery store when I heard a little boy ask his mom, what's that on her leg? I turned around to find the child pointing at my varicose veins. He didn't mean to hurt my feelings, but it did. That's the moment that I knew it was time to do something about it. I called West Medical and set up a consultation on my drive home. West Medical was able to completely remove my ugly varicose veins in one hour with no downtime. Now my legs look smooth and incredible. If you have varicose veins, you should give them a call. It's a quick and easy procedure, and the results really are amazing. West Medical works with all BPO health insurance providers and they also offer great financing options. Call West Medical for a private consultation. Call 1-800-WEST-MEDICAL. That's 1-800-937-8633 or visit westmedical.com. I feel incredible because I call 1-800-WEST-MEDICAL. The kids are back to school, and autumn's just around the corner. Hey, it's Leanne Tweeden reminding you commutes take longer during the school year, so please be patient. Why rush? My friends at SoCal Plumbers 911 work around your schedule. Need an appointment after the office? Call SoCal Plumbers 911. Busted water heater? Definitely call SoCal Plumbers 911. Highly skilled and available 24-7. Enjoy $50 off with their back-to-school special. Dial 877-PLUMBER or go to SoCal Plumbers. 911.com if you could work at the best without it costing you anything, why not? Attorney Sweet James Bergener is a great attorney defined by knowledge, fairness, and integrity. He has a winning track record resulting in millions for his clients. This is what you need if you get hurt or in an accident. you got to call Sweet James, 800-881-2021 or sweetjames.com. Hi, it's Dr. Leanna and Margaret. Ever wonder why you are the way you are? Want to know more about yourself and your psychology? You have questions, we have answers. Tune in to On the Couch with Dr. Leanna and Margaret, Fridays at midnight, right here on Talk Radio 790 KABC. Why won't a plumber just tell me what it costs to unclog my drain over the phone? Is it that complicated? No, it's not. It makes no sense at all. They obviously have a price. Whoa, you've got a nice aroma. Who are you? Mike Diamond, the Smell Good Plumber. Will you tell me how much to unstop my drain? $99. But you haven't seen it. Don't need to. Doesn't matter if it's a kitchen sink or a mainline sewer stoppage. The Smell Good Plumbers at Mike Diamond will unclog almost any drain for $99. Almost? Yeah, there are a few exceptions, but you can read all about them on our website before you call. Just go to thesmellgoodplumber.com. Wow, you're like up front and everything. I just called a guy named Bubba who wouldn't tell me anything. No Bubba's here, ma'am. Just professional plumbers who show up on time, smell good, and unclog drains for $99. Call us, 1-800-446-MIKE. Contractor license number 399170. You're listening to Gervie's Law, the intersection of law and life on Talk Radio 790 KABC. Yes, you're listening to Gervie's Law right here on Talk Radio 790 KBC. I'm going to talk really fast because we only have about 15 minutes left and we got a lot to talk about. We're talking to Dove Charney, the former CEO, chairman, founder, everything, Mr. Keyman at American Apparel, and he has a new company that is shooting up the charts in the Shmata business. <laughs> Carrie, have you ever been featured on Saturday Night Live? Have I? No, my dad has Your several dad, times. Casey Kasem. Yeah, several times he was. Dana Carvey did him, so and he was so good. Dana Carvey is amazing. Dana so amazing. Fred Armisen played <laughs> Dove Charney <laughs> on Saturday Night Live. Did he do a good job? I actually never really watched it. No, I, mean, I had to. Stay, I wanted How to stay at a distance from could it. Could you not watch that's that? Because it was a, ridiculous. Of course, that's, that's why. Such a, I, I, I'll watch it tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I'm over it. Please, please watch. Has your mom watched it? 
I think my mother possibly avoided it, or maybe she watched it in secret. I saw segments of it. I'm, I, I'm, I'm, whatever it is, it is. You know, you know, you've landed when they're kicking your ass it's on true. Saturday Night Live. And you but, know, it's <laughs> interesting you say that. You know, you've landed when they're kicking your ass. You were having your ass kicked in a deposition in approximately 2005 by the man standing, sitting beside you, Keith Fink of Keith A. Fink and Associates. And I say he was kicking your ass. He really wasn't. You were holding your own. But you were going tete You were going head to head. I'm using a little French to just, yeah. you know, keep you honest here. Why the heck did you hire this man? Because I'll tell you, when I kicked ass in cross axes, they don't hire me. Um, first of all, I think it's a great strategy to hire a lawyer that you admire and thinks, thinks done a great job. And he does and has done an, amazing job for his clients and when you see that you see the passion and you know when you're on the other end of a stick and you need to hire a fighter you want to hire that person he's a great fighter he's got a good sense of humor he he he, he he's he's a he's a strat he's he's an awesome strategist you he's a creative thinker he's an artist very I mean, he, creative he 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 just killed me in this lawsuit it was like awful you know, we were sword but, fighting to the end. But I'll tell you, <laughs> you have uh, never been found liable or anything for any of these allegations. They've either been settled or they've been... Because generally out. they're settled because you have an insurance company to push it to settle. But yeah. I did litigate a number of these cases and I won them. And I'm proud of that. And, you know, and, and Keith, no fact finder. I got, there's a Keith... Not against thing called, me. I had a, I had a Keith... I have Keith's quote, like this famous quote that I always use, I sent to journalists, you know, something along the lines that I have no fact finder, jury, or arbitrator has ever found me guilty of engaging in sexual harassment. So, bang, boom, that's Keith's quote. Yeah, but then you, I want to hear about this thing where you tore him down on the internet and you put up websites and you hated Keith. No, we had, well, we had it, we, you know, First Amendment. We went after him. What do you His do? Best, we, well, the best thing I think that we did that we, I think hit a nerve was we took it out. Oops, my seat just fell down. My, we as took long it as your pants didn't fall down, yeah, that's okay. Be careful. Okay. <laughs> anyway, so, oh, I love that accent. Right, it's my Zeta. It, it's a dying accent. You know, we don't hear that anymore. Go to yes, New York. From, no, no, you, no, you no, don't you hear don't. it anymore. We're, really? Yeah, we're, the Yiddish? We're, we're talk, not like that. We're yeah. it's, more, it's morphed. We're English, Eng Yiddish English is like the dove, way it was. Dove. Yeah. We're talking about greenas. Exactly. Okay, so no ba back to back to where we were talking about. Keith was an amazing lawyer. He's kicked my ass left and right. He outlawyered us in so many ways because conventional lawyers can't do some things that that Keith does because he's on his own right. and he's only accountable to one party, and it's to his clients. You understand? That's it. He's not accountable to convention. Right. Um, of a large firm, etc. He is he is the ultimate decider, and he's he's a genius. Now, back to back to what we're talking about. We took an ad out in the Daily Bruin. This is before your Keith. romance started. This is when That's you didn't true. like him. But it's okay. I had you know what I was. He was a he's being a lawyer in Los Angeles. You have to be a propagandist. Okay, <laughs> let's face it. A lot of this <laughs> is PR. A lot of it's PR. <laughs> you know, I'll and tell Addie you, we would have, say that, and he would say that, and a thousand other lawyers. We have <laughs> we've had his friend Lisa Bloom on the show, Gloria <laughs> Allred. We have all Gloria the, Allred knows very well the game. Okay? All the propagandists. <laughs> right. So sometimes you fight propaganda with propaganda, but at the end of the day. Sometimes once at a blue moon, you got to go to trial, and uh, it. You know, I think Keith is an excellent debater. He's light on his feet. He's got the memory. He's aggressive, and he's caffeinated at all times with no coffee. It's just naturally ca. You don't drink coffee, do you? I do. I love it. Okay, don't tell him. So anything. he is caffeinated. But I am, I'm wired without. So coffee. what's the That's worst correct. thing you did to your lawyer? Who? Yeah, okay, Keith Meek yeah. is your so, lawyer now. Okay. What's the worst thing so you did to him? So I poked a dog? bear, and the bear pushed back. Okay, and they went over the top. So what do you think's the worst thing you guys did? In That's, the daily burn. You know what? There was no worse because at all times, at all times, you know. You're in the ring and you're fighting. We okay, I want to know what you did to it. I want to know. I want to know. Dirty. Okay, what happened? They know. Okay, because they're sitting with me a long time. Okay, I don't know how much he could only tell you. They spent tens of thousands of dollars <laughs> researching everything they could on Keith Fink. Um, <laughs> it's a lot of books. You must have. I read a lot of books. So, so the thing I love the most. Okay, and your listeners know this is UCLA. So they took an ad out. I was teaching in the summer. 
It, and so there was a Bruin. Bruin comes out Monday, does our paper. Monday, Tuesday, yes. Wednesday, Thursday. I was teaching a Thursday. And so they had an ad on the day I was teaching. And I teach at night, 5 o'clock. Mm -hmm. My debate coach calls me and says, you better pick up a copy of the Daily Bruin. So they had a full-page ad. They photoshopped my picture wearing a suit behind <laughs> leather-bound books. <laughs> and they basically made me out to be some kind of a predator. And it's sponsored by American Apparel. Uh, Starring so Dov Charney. I want to uh, say, do well, you that think was UCLA? Do you think UCLA today, in the politically correct no. environment we are in today, would have allowed that? Would have allowed that advertisement? They wouldn't. But no. they did then because it was a time when there was a little bit more. Of, you know, he's they 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 were. Before we talk about Los <sighs> Angeles Pearl, because I want to get I, through all I, this. That, tell tell us what's right about Donald Trump. What's right about Donald yeah. Trump? I I got to tell you. The I first of all I think Donald Trump sucks. I don't like him. Okay? I don't like what he stands for. But when Gloria Allred went on TV and said here's accuser number 20 or 16 or 12 or whatever it was and there may be allegations, that's not good enough. What I think Hillary Clinton should have done is says, "Okay, I understand what allegations are. We've heard plenty of them. We've heard allegations about my husband." Let's talk about the issues. Where Donald Trump's a problem is on the issue of immigration. For example, who's getting the brunt of the immigration matter? Los Angeles. We're the ones. Your, wor your workers. My workers are documented. They're U.S. citizens or they have green cards. But the community isn't. There's and you have over 350 workers now in your new company. Is that That's true? correct. That's wow. correct. But I think the wow. issue of immigration is damaging to you know the fact that we are not embracing immigrants and coming up with a proper... Immigra yeah. ongoing immigration yeah. policy, which was proposed by Ron the Reagan administration after the amnesty. We need immigrants to drive the economy. Your grandparents were immigrants. They absolutely were. And if it wasn't if it wasn't for immigrants, we wouldn't have had the Western Railroad. We wouldn't have had the Erie Canal to develop New York, and America would look different. You know, and we probably wouldn't even exist in the way we understand but it. But are you not a proponent of make America great, build within this country, let People have work who are American. Who's a libertarian in this room? Uh, Larry Elder. Okay, let's go with this. Free trade is a good thing. I don't believe in borders. I believe in free f the free markets. I still believe in manufacturing in Los Angeles because if you're going to make a good if you're going to make a good casserole, you better make it yourself. And if you're going to make a good T-shirt, you need to make it under your nose. Okay, garments they can be made here and they can be made efficiently with new technology, new distribution technology such as online sales. You can skip. You could yeah. skip the hey, store. You go from the factory. You go from dumb, the factory dumb. to the consumer. Calm down. Garments. We need to talk about Los Angeles apparel. This is very important. Yes. This is what you are doing. You are putting your money where your mouth is. Yes. Christine Kudarucci said your new company is making quote profoundly unflattering clothing. What we in our terms call schlepper clothing. Well, because, wait a second. Is she you're an getting. She's, she's a, not an she authority. She got paid twelve dollars to write that. I no, mean, I don't know what she is. What, where does she work? But okay. isn't it true that <laughs> you're, take out an ad. you're you're getting away from the sexy that you had with American Apparel? False. Okay, then let's hear it. You have a you have a chance to say that these are not schleppers clothes for people my first my of, age. First of all, we have a full bodysuit collection. That is going to be coming out. There's some sneak previews on Los Angeles underscore. No, it's Dove. Char excuse me, Dove Charney underscore Los Angeles. C H A R N E Y. D O V C H A R N E Y. Now listen. The bottom line is, oversize is coming back in. We're moving away from tight skinny jeans for men and for women. We're moving to baggier fits. That's part of the fashion cycle. It doesn't mean that we're not going to have also tight fitting body suits and so forth, but we're not going to be, we're moving into a relaxed fit cycle. And that's a matter of fashion. It's not about, about and, 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 and by the way, well-draped relaxed fits can be very, very central and very romantic and beautiful. Especially for people that don't have perfect bodies. That's not, yeah, that it can be, one could say that, but also you can, a woman with a perfect body could look over the top mm -hmm. in, in a well-draped clothing. It's not always about... Fashion is about mystery, it's, it's about intrigue, it. and it's about art, and it's not always about fitting into a tight-fitting um, you know, rubber band. Where did and you get the money to bring this company into existence and bring some of your old folks from American Apparel over? Well, the truth of it is, 
a, a couple of people banded together. Some inv- one investor came. I didn't even know. He just came and he just one guy walks in my office. He said, "Like what you're doing?" He wrote me a fifty thousand dollar check. Wow. Then another wow. another guy through some vendor came in and invested two million dollars. But before all that happened, my workers were giving me. I was busted. I lost all my wealth. My workers gave me five hundred, a thousand bucks, two thousand bucks, five hundred bucks loans. Okay, these micro loans that they were making to me it was a couple hundred grand, but it got us rolling. You know, so let's say that people came together, and Keith has been totally supportive through 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 the worst of it. You know, and I've had it friends, people. Some people came in, workers came, and they helped us paint and get the things that set up. That says so much about you and your character and your company. You have these people, these immigrants, people that probably don't have a lot of money, saying, look, we believe in you. You you, you created a company that helped us out, our families out. Here's the, what I have. Here's my savings. That says so much, and I hope, I'm sure Keith Fink's going to use this in in the fact, you know, when you're suing these people where they say you had this, you know, this uh, this predator kind of character. That is ridiculous. Unbelievable. I think that says a lot about your character, Dove. So good for you. And I, know I really it do. Says more about, it says much more about the city and what it's all about, what kind of community we have. And Don't what, be humble on this one. No, but, uh, no, 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 no. This is you because honestly, if people didn't say, you know, if somebody and, and their, their savings might be 500, might be 1,000, might be, you know, if they're not going to give that to a city. They're not going to give that to the people who have, you know, they're, they're so, politicians. They're going to give it to somebody who gave them a job and helped their lives That's out. right. Be proud. Where do we go from here with Los Angeles Apparel? It's now a wholesaler. Are you getting out into the retail market? People want to know this is something new and exciting for Dove, Charney, and the people of Los Angeles. A couple of months, we'll have a website open. We might do a Kickstarter before where we feature five or six products, and you could buy like the first series, series one of Los Angeles apparel, a bodysuit, a t-shirt, a jean, um, a sweatshirt. We're th- considering to do that where people can buy and have a commemorative first piece. Okay. Awesome. So, and then, so they can buy a piece, get, get it at a reasonable price and also know that they're helping us m- mount the company. The money that we make from that will go to really gen, you know, open up the larger, broader website. We're just not sure if we want to do it or not. We're getting some, you know, feedback on that. We, or, but we do plan before Christmas to have a full web store open and we'll, we want to open bricks and mortar retail again. And we have our eye in a couple of Well, you, you have a website that people can go to. To visit and check visit, out the yeah. concept, but it's not that's, available to That's Los Angeles? That's, it's, uh, America, sorry, Los Angeles Apparel. Oh, oh. Los <laughs> Angeles Apparel. Ellen, no, it's exciting. <laughs> move, move to strike that from the record. He move said to American. Strike. I did, and I said, um, yeah. It's uh, exciting uh, that he's in <laughs> South Central. Can you, t- can you take some time to, uh, tell Alan why South Central? Well, what we've seen is a gentrification of the entire city okay but south central has spirit it's o- original los angeles the signage the people the restaurants the community the businesses the schools i love that neighborhood i live there i live in my factory i'm there every day the spirit of south central the intermixing of all these different cultures the historical positioning of this location it's a very passionate place, and it's one of the most important neighborhoods in the United States right now. He he sounds like he's going to be the next mayor of Los Angeles. Bor- born and raised in Montreal, right <laughs> Quebec. <laughs> yes. You know, guys, I want to thank you. This has been a real pleasure. Keith, it's always a pleasure having you here. And now we actually have someone verifying the fact that you're an excellent attorney. Okay. I'm glad you <laughs> it's needed, not just uh, you. I'm glad you needed the corroboration. Uh, I need it. Uh, I need always not, uh, he, 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 does, he, he, de- he deserves that. Dove, thanks for coming. You know, a lot of people, I think you're misunderstood. That's just me. I know we had LeVar Ball on here, of all people. And he called me the greatest interview in the world <laughs> saying you're the only guy that understands me. him i'm the only guy that understands him and i said you know it's like my father used to say a stupid person doesn't know that they're stupid and he loved that quote because he said everyone else out there didn't understand him but i did so i'm not sure what that means about me the fact of the matter is you're not the most controversial person we've had on the show and we appreciate the fact that you can you can come and really give your perspective 
of life, of your business, of this wonderful city, and of course, of social justice, fighting for the people who really need the support that they don't get from some of the politicians and some of the CEOs in this country. Well, I hope to be on your show again. It has been an absolute pleasure. And uh, yeah, we appreciate you having us. Thank you so much, and, and we're happy to have you again. We want to thank everyone. Carrie, I want to thank you for being here. Thank you, Alan. And thank everyone for listening. Next week, right here, tune in to Gervy's Law. Thanks for listening. This show furnished by Rowan, Gervy, and Wynn. 